Well, how do that, chums? As I, Captain Stephen, today, chums, for you guys in the viewerverse, I have a little bit of speculation. So I'm going to come up with three ideas around the station override for the station core. Heck yes. So now, chums, I'm going to start with the most sort of out there, most mind-blowing idea first and work down to the most, well, what I think is probably most likely. So here we go, the first one, chapter one, alternate verse. So I think maybe you could input your station override and it jumps you into an alternate reality, perhaps into the realm of glass, the void or the abyss. I mean, sometimes inside of these stations, you come across some very sort of displaced travellers, don't you? So yeah, let's head on up here and we'll see if we can find one of the travelers i did look earlier i did spot one so you know let's go see if we can find him where are you traveler um mr light bulb head there he is he just walked straight freaking past me hello there mr light bulb head now it even refers to these as lost travelers and makes out that they're not truly there like they might be an echo of a separate reality or something like that now a lot of the interactions that you have with these travelers mention an alternate reality one even goes as far as to say that inside of their reality they've never come across the viking the gek or the corvax which is quite interesting I shall put a link in the top right hand corner to every single interaction I have had with a traveller and everything that they had to say. Some of it is mind blowing. One even mentions multi swords rather than multi tours. Frickin' mental. How cool would that be to have a multi frickin' sword? Heck yes! Now one interaction, I believe the one with the multi sword, actually goes to talk about their own king. Their own leader of their verse is a king and they want to seek out the leader of your verse and you can actually claim to be said king, which is pretty awesome. But they want to lay to waste and war against us. And that could explain things like maybe these abandoned stations that are blown to heck and haven't got a core in the background here. So maybe the core in these got burnt out and perhaps jump in reality got them stuck in between that reality for a while a little bit like event harassing the movie and that would explain all this gunge and weirdness going on here if they do implement waterfalls i hope they do a better job than that fudge and heck that's just freaking weird isn't it yeah but there we go awesome so yeah, it could explain why we've got all these abandoned stations it could tie in quite nicely to this couldn't it really if the station override lets you jump dimensions and perhaps when you jump dimensions it awakens some of the sleeping evil upon planets inside that system perhaps we're going to be given 16 minutes to go and kill the evil festations that inhabit the worlds and yeah take them on maybe use the myth beacon perhaps in conjunction with trying to find these monstrosities and weirdness and perhaps the station override like i say gives you six minutes to go and loot some pretty awesome stuff that you just can't get in our verse to bring into our verse from the alternate verse Okay, so yeah, I quite like this idea, but is it possible? I don't think it's very possible. Heck no, we'll get to that in a bit. So here we go. Here's idea number two. So chapter two is station ownership. So yes, we become the overseer of a settlement. Now, funny enough, it uses the wordage of overseer, flight path overseer, on the actual console behind us. So perhaps we can become a station overseer. Now you can see here, if I go into camera mode from right back where I am and look at these little kiosks, there is nothing there. Like Lego blocks are waiting for something to be inputicated into them. So perhaps you might be able to choose your kiosk sort of vendors and what sort of market values or even the trade type for the system. And set, well, maybe it starts off as a one star. And maybe as you go along, just like our settlements, it upgrades in rank and maybe it becomes a three star. Heck yes, you know, and how you are with your citizens could set the conflict zone. So yeah, it could be quite cool to have ownership of your own station. It really could. So maybe owning your own station allows you to register it as a hub against the Galactic Atlas, which is like a separate website and entity at the moment that Hello Games has to look after. Perhaps this could tie that in and make it automatic to take some of that burden away from the Hello Games team. And also it could let you set up maybe a local fire team, which is like your local mini instance, so you can run missions together without worry of other players interfering, or even have maybe up to 12 other players inside of your guild. Perhaps you could register it as a guild as well as a hub. I mean, this could come very hand dangly fangly awesome for doing weekend missions and also running station missions. Perhaps they might do a mission overhaul. And look, there are about 12 lines upon this thing here. So maybe they're going to put 12 landing pads inside of the actual station and expand the station out. Perhaps the station is going to change in look and feel. That could be a thing, couldn't it? I guess it could. 
Okay, so number three chums. This one I think is probably most likely. Mainly because this one is a flight path control. And the reason why I say that is it's written in freaking big freaking letters on the screen, isn't it? By this thing. Look, flight path landing overseer. So yeah, maybe the override lets you choose what ships are going to land and maybe in what class. So you can actually pick from the seed pool and actually pick the ship that you want to bring in. Now there is one line there that's errored out at the moment, but perhaps that's because one of your ships, your own ship, is on a landing pad and it's not part of the original flight path heck no it's not you're an anomaly inside of this system aren't you like most others but at the moment there's only eight landing pads like i say perhaps they're going to make the station bigger and there's a good reason why i say perhaps they're going to make the station bigger is a couple of patch notes ago they actually said that they had fixed ships flying in through the actual ceiling have they bollocks no they have not they still fly in through the freaking ceiling and i'm wondering whether they're going to make the mouth of the station larger add more landing pads because because yes, they've made some of the ships bigger, like the explorers, and some of their wings actually intersect into the actual sort of mezzanines above where all the sort of, where, wherever the walking goes. And yeah, I've been stopped by them a couple of times getting into the ramps because they intersect into the actual walking area. So at the moment you may be standing around inside of a station waiting for the exotic ship to fly in, or to wait for an S-class of your favourite looking ship in that system to fly in. It's dead game time. I don't know how anyone finds that fun. A lot of people jump in their ship, out of their ship, and do a reload, and then wait for the, the wave to come in and see if the ship flies in by sheer freaking fluke and chance. So maybe the actual override is simply going to let you choose what ship and what class flies in, and in what order or something. So yeah, that's probably the most likely idea. I think chums, Hercules. Okay, well, I'm throwing in a bonus now. This one is called Cosmetic Shizzle, because a lot of the time, Hello Games likes to think, well, what can we throw in that they haven't asked for, but they, they, they just don't know that they want it until we give them it, like Exomex. Looking at the station override, they cost 256,000 units, so only a quarter of a million. You know, you can craft stuff that's worth far more than a station override, so perhaps it might just let you change the lighting. Now, on a colour wheel and patch colours, you know, the actual, you know, Pantone references, there's 256,000 colours. It's just sheer coincidence, maybe, that they're 256,000 units. But maybe it just lets you change the lighting <laughs> inside of a station. How madly, how mad would that be if that was the case? If it just lets you change the lighting? Now you're probably thinking, Captain Steve, surely not. That, surely that's not all that it's going to do. Well, perhaps not. But at the same time, look at what you can craft for the same sort of money in unitary value. Now, yeah, you could have, well, that's, that's just takes the mick. Now, that's, that's it again. But look, you know, just a circuit board is three times as much almost. Or even a semiconductor is almost the same in price. And you can make some of these things fairly early game. In fact, you get given a lot of this stuff when you send frigates out on missions. Living glass? What? Twice as much as a station override, you say? You see what I mean? They're not that very high in monetary value. It depends on how we get rewarded these things, doesn't it, people, you know? Because otherwise, I, I kind of think that we're probably making a bigger deal out of this than what it actually is going to be. I mean, they have teased it to us for freaking umpteen amount of time, though, and made us think that it's more important than probably it's going to be. I mean, it could just be that after you've actually popped the station override, you come and see this embassy up here, and perhaps they give you something a little bit gnarly, you know? It could just be a lot more recognition or maybe they give you triple amount of what they would normally give you. So in this case, I might just get a bucket ton of freaking nanites. So there we have it, chumps. That's the way I'm thinking right now. And it could change in a couple of weeks' time, and then you might see another one of these videos pop up. But yeah, I'm not very good at predicting this sort of stuff, though, am I? Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts, your comments. Please leave them. Awesome. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit a like and a subscribe. And I'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on Patreon and over on YouTube membership. Thanking you, backers. And if you want to support this channel, just don't skip the adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Or yeah, just stay with Captain Steve a little bit longer and hit something on this screen. There's merch here now too.